Hi everyone and welcome to my pastel tutorial how to paint a sunset. This is a scene of Belfast using some of the many photographs I took when I lived there. The photo is really only a starting point though, I want the painting to be more vibrant and exaggerated. The first thing I do is sketch in loosely where the main clouds are. If you've watched my other tutorials you'll know I use a mixture of real-time footage with the repetitive parts speeded up. If you like my videos, please do hit the subscribe button as I'm making many more on a range of different subjects. So once I give myself a rough idea of where the big clouds are, I use the side of my blue pastel to cover some area. At first, I was going to leave an area for the top left cloud, but the more I looked at it, I could see that blue sky through parts of the cloud so I fill it all in and will work over the top of this. This is really just a thin layer, I'm not leaning heavily. I don't want to fill the paper's tooth too quickly. Like every layer I give the pastel a good rub into the paper. Make sure you're in a well ventilated room when you're working with pastel. Although, to be honest, this is the only part of my process that creates a bit of a dust cloud and that's when I'm covering large areas. And now I use a lighter blue and lightly blend the colour into the blue I've already applied. I try not to leave any hard edges on the darker blue, making it easier for me to blend them together. And now I come back with the darker blue and make very thin films of colour to further soften that gradient. I never build up a gradient of colour in one layer, they always have many thin layers blended together. I choose a mid-tone orange for the horizon. I want to go darker than required as the highlights will lighten it. So you can see each time I add another layer and blend, the gradient softens and I lose any edges. And now for the first hint at that sun. I start to sweep some lighter yellow tones across from the right. So far I've used mostly the sides of the pastels. Now to start mapping out the rest of the clouds, I use a grey lilac, knowing I'll need them to be darker but not willing to commit at this stage in case I mess up. I use the end of the pastel to sketch in their rough outline. Now it's not often I go for highlights this soon, but I think I wanted to map out those areas early on as they're important and will immediately give me a sense of the lighting. Also I don't want my brightest lights to have to cover a really dark area. I'm using BE1 which is a lovely light warm tone from Unison. I'll strengthen these with some grey 27. This is what I use normally as my white, as it's a really lovely yellowy tone and it's not as stark as pure white. So I just continue to map out the lighter clouds. I'm not leaning very hard, but I go back over areas to strengthen with more layers later.
As always, if you're enjoying my tutorials, please do subscribe to the channel. Coming next in the series is how to build up skin tones, followed by some short tutorials on features like eyes and mouths. So I have lots of new material coming and a list of your requests to work through. I'm using mostly the flat end of the pastel during this, dragging it usually from left to right. And now I use that grey 27 to brighten areas. Sorry for the lighting quality on this top left corner. This footage was actually taken a while ago and I've since upgraded my lighting. It's mostly the bottom of these clouds which are catching the most light from the setting sun. And I soften all of that into the paper. Using a peachy tone, I add some warmth to the clouds. Behind this main central cloud area, the sky seems to glow more towards the horizon, so I use some really cool light blue to lighten the area just above the cloud. Then this gets well blended into the sky, especially where they meet. Again, picking out some of the areas, really catching that light. This is my unison grey 27, my brightest tone here. I start to add some of the smaller wispy clouds and as I become more sure of their placement, I can strengthen them. Now using a mid-tone purple, I start to block in the dark areas. I will darken parts of it later, but this colour is a good mid-tone to start. If in doubt, go in the middle where you can both darken and lighten. I wanted to put some of this in real time to show how lovely the pastel applies on velour when you add a little more pressure. You get such solid pigmented colour. Definitely more akin to applying thick oil paint. While pastel is a dry medium, it is pigment in its purest form and can be used to both draw and paint. Similarly, I could pick up a paintbrush and produce an oil paint line sketch. I guess I don't like how pastel is often perceived as only a drawing medium, as it can cross the borders. Thankfully though, I can see that changing as modern pastel makers and artists both change that perception through their work. Funnily, if I were painting this in oils, I would do it in a very similar way also using my hands to blend, so you can see why I don't oil paint, it's far too messy. 
I'm using a dark purple to strengthen this darkest cloud. I'll try and list the colors I've used in the description below. As I add highlights now, I add a slight quiver to my marks so they have a bit of a wave to them. As I blend the dark edges into the blue, you can see it soften into the sky a little. strengthening that bright area behind the cloud as I want that to really contrast. Now I add some more interesting edges to this cloud that I blocked in earlier. My marks get smaller to do that. Continuing across the rest of the piece with my peachy tone from earlier. I took so many photos of the skyline when I lived there. Further up the road from me were fields where I could imagine the bunnies in the foreground gathered to enjoy the sunset like we usually were in the studio. If you want to see this whole piece come together, check out my speed painting video of it. I'll add some links to that in the description. I continue across the piece, mapping out the main cloud with the mid-tone lilac grey. Now, because I have other layers of the sky below, when I rub the purple in, it gives a faint effect of being able to see through the top layer without mixing. This is perfect for hazy skies where you want to be able to see each film of colour in there. I need some zingy peachy orange for this area between the dark cloud and the sun, and all the way along this bottom area. Also, when you look closely at the horizon farthest away from the sun, there are hazy layers of lilac over the warm orange below. I use the pastel on its side lightly and then blend. When painting clouds, you'll often find both hard and soft edges. This is quite a hard edge with a gradient going down from that edge. The darker purple adds some contrast to the top edge and I continue to add more texture and contrast to this main band of cloud.
in the darkest area of the Clyde there is some warmth. I use an orangey brown tone lightly and then blend. Within this dark area there are some lighter areas. These look very bright as I'm applying them here but later when more films of misty colour are added they'll feel little. Try to experiment with different strengths of blending for different effects. The best part about pastel is that it can be moved around after application, a bit like oil paint. Now I bring this lilac further across the horizon line. Of course in this piece I'm making as much use of opposite colours, purple and yellow, as well as quite a lot of blue and orange. As much as I can put them together it will add more depth to the painting. If you don't know much about opposite colours that's definitely something you want to look at to improve not only your realism but just your, your overall colour choices. So now I start to work on that glowing orb which really needs to shine out so bright from the painting. I start with a light yellow, softly dragging the colour out over the sky. Again, these little areas look too bright at the moment, but they will disappear into the sun. With my white I work out from the center and drag it out lightly. With the light yellows I'm adding some of those glimmering hazy clouds near the horizon. You can see it sometimes takes several layers to get the desired effect, producing rich layered colour. But if layers are mostly thin and well rubbed in, the paper can hold a lot. Check out my link in the description for tips on using velour as I have many ways to make it easier to work with and more stable in the long run. I'll add a link to that in the description. So just continuing with the highlights on this lower section using a mid-tone peach. Notice there is often a faint glow along the mountain tops in a sunset. This will really contrast the mountain's top line. Now using a light lilac, the same one from the horizon area earlier, I add more depth to the purple clouds, softening edges and adding some texture. Finally I grew brave enough to add a heavier layer of orange. When I blend that in it starts to feel more hazy and warm over there. 
Now to blend the sun area outwards, I use the lightest yellow on its side, radiating outwards a bit like res. When these get blended in, that's exactly what they'll look like. A final layer of white, also radiating from the center. using the pastel quite lightly here to produce these wispy clouds right across the piece. I'm really just fiddling at bits here, trying to make the shapes and placement of everything look natural, strengthening highlights as I go. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but there's quite a lot of background screams. I promise I'm not hurting anyone. We're parked next to a lovely canal and there are some children playing in the water. You'll notice I used a light grey velour paper for this piece. I often favour a mid-tone as it helps my eye see the darks and lights by starting somewhere in the middle. My marks tend to get smaller and more deliberate as I progress. I use smaller pieces of pastel for smaller marks. Many of my favourite pastels are mere shards. People often ask how I can bear to break them, but they're just much more useful to me in a range of sizes. Of course they wear down naturally too, but I don't mind snapping one in half to find a sharp edge. You've got a bit of Brocky joining in there. She's very good. Again, apologies for the lighting on the far side. This was before I got my fantastic long daylight bulb. So hopefully my future videos will be better lit. So I'm really just working this side in a similar way, adding more detail to the main cloud shapes and always remembering to blend in my marks. Now some final thin films of colour help to create that misty look and soften some of my marks. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the sunset come together and have some fun trying out your own. Happy pastling!